Hello everyone and welcome to today's Chalk Talk. Today we'll be discussing about the different layers of security offered by the Web Security Appliance for your port 80 and 443 or web traffic. Alright, so to kick things off, just wanted to explain that the Web Security Appliance or the WSA is a web proxy. Right? So if what that basically means is you know you have your client side connections. And then you have your server side connections, which are typically web servers out on the internet. And then you have this nice little buffer of WSA in between that's basically protecting your client side connections from what's out on the internet. So if there are any underlying, uh, you know, faults with the protocol with HTTP or HTTPS, uh, WSA is the fall guy, basically makes sure that everything is good and it establishes a separate client-side connections, only making sure that all the return traffic from your web servers, your CNN or Yahoo, is all good before it's delivered to a to an end client. This approach is different from other inline devices or non-web proxies in general, and it's a very important distinction when it comes to web security threats. Okay, uh, and, uh, let's go through the different layers now of what the WSA offers. Whenever you have a request coming from a client that is going out to the internet, so this is your typical, you know, dub 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 dot something dot com or dot ca dot a whatever, right? That first goes through what we call a request stage. The first layer of security, which is web reputation system, right? Here, what will typically happen is WSA takes this domain or that complete URL, tries to fetch the web reputation for that particular URL. Web reputation is, for lack of a better phrase, like a credit score. You know, if you keep paying your bills on time, have a good credit history over a, you know, several years, you know you're credit worthy, so your credit score is high. If you're just starting out uh, you know, uh, building your credit or you have not paid on, you know, your credit cards on time, your credit score will be low. So based on that, we can judge how, how much credit worthy you are. Similarly to a domain, if a domain is just registered, it will typically have a poor score. Or if in the past it has hosted, uh, you know, malware, it's highly susceptible that, you know, it could be hosting malware in the future, right? So if it's a bad reputation, it's a scale of negative 10 to positive 10. If the, the more negative it is, the more worse off it is. So for a bad reputation, the WSA is gonna, you know, just block those requests outright. And these are these are at the request stage, and those are the easiest to get, right? Um, and if it's a good reputation, you know, it will allow it through. If it's suspicious or even if it's slightly good, it's gonna employ more additional filters after that. So the next filter in line is URL filtering and here you know we will take care of based on the policy set by the admin uh, you can either you know block complete sections of internet like pornography, adult, um, extreme violence, um, uh, gambling things that are basically unproductive and these are huge vectors by the way for threats to come in like you know pornography if you go on a pornographic website I'm not advocating that but if you do um, there's tons of pop-ups that could have malware in there and it's, it's just a nice little you know uh, honey trap for um, your machines to get infected so just blocking at this level although this comes under, under acceptable use policy but just blocking certain sections of the internet could block, uh, you know, very well block certain threats, right? Next up, we have very similar to URL categorization, but deeper packet inspection, what we call as uh, application visibility and control, or AVC. Right here, um, you can basically say, you know, certain aspects of popular applications like Facebook, you know, Facebook games that could typically go to third parties and may have malware in it. Uh, you could block out, you know, certain sections of applications like that. Either the complete applications or certain 
functions of an application like chat or uh, file transfer that could be another vector for uh, your system to get infected. Next up, we have DLP. And again, this could be either basic controls on the WSA with DLP or you could integrate with a third party uh, DLP application like uh, you know, semantic one two or code green or um, or digital guardian, and you can um, you know basically block certain files that are being downloaded or, or uploaded um, out to the internet. Next up, we have running out of space, so we'll go down here. Our advanced malware protection suite. So up until now, what we have discussed is basically filters, reputation, you are filtering AVC and DLP. Um, you know, these could be based on, these are exclusively request side. So when a client reaches out and the WSA, you know, first intersects that request, it employs these filters. This could be both request and response side. From here on out, this is you know what we call this is the before stage and this is now the during stage, where the response side is being scanned for um, um, additional filters. So before this, actually, there's another filter that happens that I missed out, and that's AV scanning or antivirus scanning, and here we offer three scanners in parallel. So we offer um, WebRoot, we offer Sophos, and McAfee. Right, so all of these three AV scanners run on the appliance. You don't require a separate appliance to run these. They, they operate in parallel, so any object that is being downloaded it gets sent to all three scanners independently in parallel, so you know there's no time, additional time spent, you know, serializing all of this. Any of these scanners comes back with a malicious verdict that file will be blocked on the WSA. All of the AV signature updates, all of that good stuff happens dynamically underneath the covers. The WSA contacts Talos, which you know pushes. Uh, Talos is our central intelligence, which pushes pushes uh, uh, signature updates for this AV engines. Once this is done, this is basically the during phase. Next up, we have advanced my, uh, AMP file reputation. So any files that are allowed by AV, you know, they could be still suspicious. There could be advanced malware, uh, you know, files. And a good way to know this is querying our, uh, our AMP database in the cloud. So what happens is a file comes in, we calculate the, the SHA-256 of that file, query the AMP cloud. Um, AMP Cloud could basically say this is malicious, block this file, this is clean, let it go, or if it's suspicious, you know, uh, submit this file for further analysis, which brings us to the next filter. It's AMP File Analysis. So this is, um, you know, I could speak about this for the next 30 minutes. It's, 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 it's much more than a sandbox, but in the pure sense, it is a sandbox. It, it analyzes files on 250 different behavioral characteristics and uh, detonates this in a sandbox, trying to understand whether it's doing something malicious under the, under the covers. Is it querying certain uh, registry values? Is it changing anything in between? Is it uh, doing something malicious in general? And all of that will be captured over here. All right. Um, next up, we have... Our third filter in AMP called the Advanced AMP Retrospection. All right, so here is you know this is this was the before, this is the during, and then this is the after stage where um, you know most of the files would be blocked at this stage, and then they're allowed. In the after stage, you know, 
no security is 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 complete security. There will be some threats, especially the advanced targeted ones that we'll get through. But based on more information that is analyzed by the by our AMP cloud, either in, in the AMP cloud or through other endpoints that basically have seen this file and, and are now reporting that file to be malicious, those alerts get sent to the WSA so the administrator knows that hey, at a certain point of time this file has gone through and John or Mary or whoever has downloaded this file and now this file is malicious. So their systems are infected, I need to go quarantine their systems. If you have the advanced malware protection end client on those clients, it's automatic remediation at that point of time. It's going to completely clean up those files or any files that that original infected file may have downloaded, it's going to go ahead and clean up those files too. It's pretty neat actually the way it does it. And the last filter in our after stage is CTA or Cognitive Threat Analytics. This, this you know, till now we have, you know, request and then we have the response, right? And what we typically call a web transaction, it's a request and response combo. You know, all of these filters either act on the request and response, but they act at one request and one response. CTA takes a more heuristic, more, um, you know, overview of the entire transactions and tries to figure out, hey, are these bunch of transactions very similar and, you know, originating from this one end client and trying to connect to uh, known command and control websites, then maybe this endpoint is, is you know, uh, infected. And it, it gives you severity levels, what it's doing underneath. Um, it, it does a bunch of post-analytic stuff um, that will tell you with certain probability, like 100% probability or 90% probability, that hey, these endpoints are infected, and this is the reason why we say they're infected, because it's it's doing some ransomware stuff or, or is infected by Trojan and is uh, you know sending out maybe sensitive data out to the internet. Right? So that's that's very good stuff too. Um, this is basically the overview. I would highly recommend you guys uh, to visit um, wsa-demo.com. I'm just going to write it here. Which basically, you know, walks you through a sample dashboard what you would expect on a WSA if you were to deploy WSA in your network. And it, and it gives you some of the, um, you know, um, workings for each of these filters. How do they work and what kind of reports can you expect um, with blocks from each of these filters? It's, it's pretty neat. In closing, I would also want to mention that um, these are for port 80 and 443, so both HTTP and HTTPS traffic. For SSL decryption, we have, um, uh, since the WSA only deals with web traffic, um, it's fine-tuned for, uh, for performance of SSL. So if you have hard levels of SSL, you know, once we started out, um, we used to see about 10% overall SSL traffic compared to HTTP, um, and that traffic has steadily increased as, you know, Facebook and Google and everyone else moved to uh, uh, SSL, that traffic has grown from 10% to 50 or even 70% now. So uh, if you want, and most of these threats come over SSL, so if you want to block those threats and have visibility in them, it's important that you have SSL decryption turned on. And WSA offers that in a, in, in a high performance SSL engine. You don't need a separate appliance for this. The WSA has an inbuilt SSL proxy that will do man in the middle for you. No additional hardware required. Um, and it also does strict SSL checks. So that, that means, you know, um, you have your certificate checks. If it's an intermediate certificate, the whole chain of trust is not there. It, it, it recreates that chain of trust, makes sure it's all good. If it's an invalid certificate, it blocks it. If you don't want to decrypt this particular uh, you know, connection, you can send it as pass-through, but it just doesn't pass through, it just it still does some SSL checks on it. So even if, if though you know if for privacy reasons or compliance you're not decrypting, say banking, you're still making sure that the certificate presenting by the banking website is good um, and is allowed by the WSA. So a uh, lot of great stuff. Um, it's it's defense in depth. Uh, we see about uh, you know 96% of threats blocked at this layer. These you know two will block an additional 3%. So we are at 99. 
and about less than 1% threats, you know, fall in the advanced malware category. But these are the, the real bad threats, you know, um, these are advanced stuff, no, or zero day threats, and you require, um, you know, advanced engines, scanning engines for that. And that's what our AMP and our CTA scanners provide. All right, with that, we'll wrap it up. Um, I, hi I highly recommend visiting this website. It calls out all of these stuff and more in greater detail. All right, with that, we'll wrap it up. Thank you so much.